Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks and welcome you all to yet another vlog of mine, the second vlog of the week, no less people. I've had this idea for this vlog in my head already, but we did a midweek vlog, which was not a particularly exciting vlog. It was there really to help anyone who was in the nightmare scenario of blue screen of death as I was when it came to the Elgato capture, of which we solved and that video is back there if you want to watch it. But I realised it wasn't the most exciting of topics to anyone who watches my vlog. In fact, it probably wasn't really a vlog. It was more of a help video. But when I ever do things like this on camera, I just add it to the vlog list. So it's all contained within the same playlist and people can follow what I've been doing from vlog to vlog and such like. Now this this idea, as I say, I've had this idea of this vlog in my head for a little while. And plus, like a midweek vlog, you can't have flagons, people. You can't have flagons on a midweek vlog. <laughs> so it doesn't feel like a vlog when I do a vlog without a flagon. <laughs> Maybe I should call them flogs. <laughs> that sounds slightly wrong, but <laughs> I should start calling them flogs. I think that could be my thing, people. Cheers, everyone. You know, I'd buy you one if I could. So it made sense. It made perfect sense to be doing this uh, Friday vlog like I do. It's usually a Friday or a Saturday. And before we get going, Christmas is approaching, people. Yes, it is. And I finally put me decks up last weekend. I'll, I'll put a little picture. I, I kind of showed me decks up because I that was my first Christmas in this house last year. And the decks are pretty much the same. I think I might have showed them off last year. I don't. It's just me, so I don't go overboard or anything. Uh, Christmas Day, I'll be at my dad's. Uh, outside of that, I just put them up for me to, to enjoy. So I don't go too crazy. It's quite a simple thing. A lot of these pieces my dad gave to me from extras that he had. But then other things like the the the, the Santa and there's a nutcracker somewhere and other such bits I got myself. But my dad gave me a few bits he had. But the, the Christmas tree part is actually quite cool. It's dead easy. It's just like a like an upside down cone that sort of gives off that tree feeling and then I wrap the lights around it and just feed them around the top of the, the living room. So it's quite it's quite a nice vibe. In fact, when I took them down last year, it felt quite dull. <laughs> I just suppose it would with any Christmas lights. But I was tempted to get a set of those lights that were sh slightly shorter to, to go in the guitar chill out area just so that, because it's quite a nice sort of glow of, of light it gives off without having to have, you know, big lights on and stuff. So but anyway, there you are. My, my decks are up, people. And I'm ready for the Christmas period. Yes, Christmas Day I'll be spending at my dad's. And New Year's Eve, would you believe it, is my brother's 50th birthday party. So, well, I say birthday party. I'm not sure if it's a party or just a small gathering or what. But we're going down to my brother's for that me and my dad that's on new year's eve he's down in pool which is near bournemouth i believe in fact that's where harry redknapp lives and possibly even jamie and everyone else it's a particularly plush little area it has to be said very nice though if you've never been to pool or bournemouth bournemouth has possibly one of the best beach sections of the entire country and Paul has got, I mean, that's where the rich folk park their boats, basically. <laughs> it's got a beautiful harbour. And, yeah, I mean, you can, Paul's literally, like, next door to Bournemouth. It's, it's only, like, you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes even in the car. So they're very, very close together. Uh, so if you've ever been to that part of the world, summertime is the time to do it, really. But, yeah, so I'm down there for New Year's Eve. So that is my Christmas. Outside of that, I will try to do some videos for you guys. I will try and possibly do some streams. Now through the whole uh, the whole blue screen palaver. By the way, I've been saying I've noticed recently, and it was something I stamped out a long time ago, that what one of the most worrying things when you're recording or first start recording is is breaks in talk. Like the minute you, you'll hear loads of people do this or they'll do something similar. And it's, uh, uh, <laughs> and the minute somebody points out that people do it, or if I do it, you'll, you'll start noticing it a lot. And when I hear it in a video and someone does it constantly, it, ah, oh, because I notice it so much, it really irritates me. And I was watching my last few videos. I've noticed it's crept back in people. So I'm trying to stamp it out. So I'm going to be, I'm not going to worry about gaps in what I'm saying and stuff. I'm just not going to say, uh, 
<laughs> as much as I can. It's one of these. It's one of these things your brain does through like I don't know. It's not you're not even consciously doing it. So we're going to stop doing that, people. I'm stamping it out now before it annoys me. Um, <laughs> that was a joke, that one. All right, so let's crack on, shall we? Uh, what was I saying there? I was going to, yes, we're going to be doing possibly some streams over Christmas. But with the whole to do with the blue screens and what have you, I had to, as anyone who watched the last video will know, I... Reinst well, I rebuilt the entire laptop and re reinstalled everything. And I haven't got around to put an OBS back on it, which is what I used to do the live streaming with. There is live streaming on the Elgato system, but it's not really as intricate and as good. Like you can, you can be far more arty with with OBS because you can throw in your own borders and and all that sort of stuff. So it is slightly easier to do the live streaming with. However, the recording I always do on the Elgato software because it's so the, the quality of capture is so good. And I've no idea how to get that same quality of capture on OBS. Even though OBS is using the Elgato device to capture, I don't I wouldn't know what the exact settings are to put into OBS to to grab that at the same quality that Elgato software does it sort of automatically. Because I did, some time ago, I did I did start capturing on OBS and somebody started pointing out to me that it, when they put it on the big screen, it didn't look very good. So something in there, and they were right, because I checked them. So that's when I reverted back to using Elgato. The other good thing about Elgato is when you record your voice, you've got a setting that says dim the gameplay audio when I speak. So it's not me constantly having to raise my voice to talk over loud action or anything. The minute I talk, the game audio dips so you can hear me. And that feature doesn't seem to exist in OBS, or I can't find it anyway. Cheers again. So without further ado, let's get to what this vlog is all about, people. So, well, you'll know what it is by... The, it'll be in the title. <laughs> but anyway, Xbox One... Backward compatibility program. It's, I mean, I've been thinking about this for ages because the more time has gone on, the more I'm actually using the Xbox One X more than I'm using the PS4 Pro. And the last time I touched the PS4 Pro was to play Assassin's Creed Origins, which my son gave me. And I haven't played anything on it since then. And that was a month ago, I think. Now, okay, I got the Switch in the meantime, and I'm going to be doing more on that. But every game that piques my interest or I want to try or I want to buy, I'm getting it for the Xbox One X. A, because it's going to, well, in the most, in the main part, it's going to play better. I've had my Tomb Raider rant because they obviously hadn't bothered thinking about it properly. But there is pretty much every game that comes out that's cross-platform is going to... I mean, Red Dead Redemption is a... I mean, that game, if you watch the Digital Foundry comparisons, that game is an absolute masterpiece on the Xbox One X. And there is massive differences between how it plays on the X to the PS4 Pro. I mean, they both play well, but the there is like next to zero drops in frame rate on the Xbox One X, whereas on any other console, there is, there is a balance found somewhere to cope with sort of heavy areas of heavy movement and, and weather and all that sort of stuff. And it doesn't take away from the gameplay experience as such. I mean, people who play it on the, the the PlayStation 4 Pro or the PlayStation 4, or indeed the Xbox One Standard, which is the worst of them, will still have a good experience with Red Red Redemption. But if you play it on the X, watching the Digital Foundry videos, there is a monumental difference between how it plays on that and everywhere else. So that is one reason for... Everything, everything I kind of want to do game-wise, I always kind of look to the X first. And I just kind of fell in love with that console the minute I got it. I love its design. I love the power of it. I love the... And, and most of all, I still love, and this is my biggest love about Xbox at the minute, because they're still, you know, they're still working toward that third-party title collection that I think is going to make people go full-on Xbox again. Because they don't have the lineup that PS4 have got by any stretch. But what they do have is the backward compatibility program. And I don't think, I think they know how popular it is to a point. But 
I don't think they realise quite how much they should sing about every big game that hits it. I mean, the Kingdoms of Amalur was when I started thinking of, well, actually, it's not. I was starting to think about this probably around when Final Fantasy XIII came out. There's been a few things, I think even before that, because there's been a few games that have come out, and, and you guys have said it as well. It's like, hang on a minute, when did this happen? Like, I didn't even know about it. And the only time you hear about it is, I think I heard about Kingdoms of Amalur on Twitter. I think I saw a tweet come up from Major Nelson or AC Bongos or somebody saying that, that game had hit back in Pat, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur. I'm pretty sure it was. The the Final Fantasy XIII one kind of snuck under the radar a little bit as well. And I am always kind of trying to keep my eye on stuff like that because I love to throw them on the channel the minute that they hit, the big ones. Now, the reason that I feel like the backward compatibility program is... I, I still think it is the Xbox One's biggest feature at the moment. They've got some, They've got some great games, you know, no doubt. I mean... For me, Gears of War 4 is still one of the visually eye-pleasing games I've seen on either console. And I played it on the Xbox One X. And it's absolutely stunning, that game on the X. I cannot even begin to tell you how good-looking that game is. So they have done stuff that that is impressive. But for me, opening up that world that I just left to come into new gen, and not only letting me play those games... But letting me play them so much better. I mean, the, it's not like they've just made it work. Like, every game they push through this software to create a a back compact version plays the frame rates that are made... Well, in 90%, 99% of the cases, I would say this. But apparently the Bioshock ones weren't overly awesome. There were still some frame rate issues there. But just about... And I haven't played those. But they... Just about everything else... Like, I'm panning these things round, and they just, they are so beautiful, it's unbelievable. And not even that, they take some of them and give them a 4K, or an extra palette of whatever it is, is it 10-bit or whatever, I can't remember now, I think it's 10-bit palette and colour palette and all this sort of stuff. And they, they, they don't just leave it at, like, let's just make it work, and then they've got that game from before. Like, they try and make it work to its absolute best and even make it better than it was before and the the frame rates are always a solid 30 sometimes i feel like they're higher than that and the the colors seem to just saturate the screen now i mean final fantasy 13 looks like a it looks like it was launched on these gen of consoles it is that good looking it is unbelievable i mean you can still see you know it, it's usually some sort of I don't, it'd be something random like the character models the gameplay the action the explosions look amazing the only the, the reason you kind of can tell when you're in it that it's not a new gen game is because things like the background stuff you can tell is not to the sort of standard that you would have now the crispness of a tube or a you know a palette a, a plate on the like a metal plate on the wall or controls on something you know you can see those sort of things are sort of last gen but as you're playing the game, you don't really notice those things that much, you know. And that's not a that's not me having a dig at, at back and pat, you know. That's just, of course, you'll notice it because it is a last gen game. And if you're really looking around, you'll you'll kind of go, oh yeah, that 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 you can spot it there. But you know, outside of being overly critical with your own mind when you're looking at these things, they they pan beautifully. The color saturations are awesome. It just everything is just incredible and i'm playing these on a 4k 55 inch tv and they are absolutely gorgeous and you'd be hard stuck in fact to find games as good as some of the ones that have hit the back and pat on this gen of console i don't think this gen of console much as though there's been some cracking games i don't think this gen of console has brought us anywhere near the variety of games that was in the last gen and i think it's uh well i think it's I think it's a bit of pressure. The, the, the more gaming goes on and the bigger the industry gets, there's more and more pressure on them to make specific types of games. And, you know, MMOs have become the thing now. Everybody wants to make an MMO, even though none of us want them. <laughs> I mean, what was that all about? I mean, so far as I can tell, Destiny's probably doing all right, but it's dying a death because it never seems to fix anything people want to, to have fixed. They always seem to be changing staff and story writers, so that never seems to work. They don't, they don't even need... I don't think they even know where they're going with the story in that game anymore. Um, I, I, oh, there was an M there, people. 
<laughs> did you notice? I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a sip of a flagon just because I did that to celebrate. So I think I mean I'm gonna rattle through this list of games, right? You you tell me, right? I'm gonna rattle through. We've all seen the games dripping in. And I'm going to rattle through the list toward the end of this this vlog or shortly. And you tell me if you think there's a better list than this on this gen. And this is just me doing RPGs, right? You tell me if there's a better list of RPGs than the ones that I'm about to rattle through on this gen of console. Because I don't think there is. And there's a few actually that I've picked aside that I'm still hoping they'll drop in there at some point. And to be fair, I think they will drop in at some point. And I think the I think the reason for me that this is the biggest part at the moment of the Xbox One X, because we know they're gonna or the Xbox One. This is we know they they're fixing the hardware side of it. That's that's why we've got an Xbox One X. It's the most powerful console out there. And the next consoles, I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again, I think the next Xbox will out without doubt be slightly more powerful than the PS5 because Phil Spencer will not have, he won't have another console that does not match or beat the PS4 and he constantly says in every interview this is where we're going to be we're going to be the most powerful console in the world basically as uh, at any time they can be which makes me think they'll probably launch, well they'll probably launch the Xbox One or that sorry the Xbox Two after the PS5, or they'll know what PlayStation are doing. I mean, they must have a little spy sniffing around. But without any shadow of a doubt, I, I think that they will they will have the most powerful console next time around. Yes, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit more powerful if they don't have the game lineup. But look, they're buying up studios all over the place. They will have a game's lineup in the next gen of consoles without any shadow of a doubt. And they've still got the big guns to come. We've got the new Gears of War coming. We've got the new Halo coming. So the, the usual suspects are coming. But they've bought up studios that do RPGs and, and all, all different types of games. So I think, you know, Sony cannot re rest on their laurels that the PS4 did really well and therefore they've won. Because they did that with the PS3 and that where well, well, that got them. So... And I had this conversation in another vlog a few weeks ago as well. I'm not convinced with this new guy either that's in charge of Sony anymore. I feel like he's, I feel like he feels like he doesn't have to do much because it's already been done. And for me, when you've still got the big titles that you have in your lineup, and you've still got what a year's worth of PS4 left, is basically saying there's nothing worth coming to E3 for because why? Why bother? Because I haven't got anything new to say, so I'm not going to come. And it's like that is just the laziest ass thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, people would rather you were there showing off more Days Gone, more Last of Us 2. I mean, they've got so much still to come. And they, it's like, how are you going to pump this stuff? I mean, all right, they've got PSX and they dumped that this year. They didn't even bother with that. It's like, so they cannot be asked doing anything until the PS5. So I hope they're not going to rest in the laurels too much. But the one thing they could have done, I think when uh, when Xbox just came up with the back compat program and it was a massive like, whoa, nobody expected it at the E3 they did it a few years back. I think PlayStation should have rethunk really because if they'd kind of come up with something similar for the PS3 titles, I think it would have been a massive boon. And the reason they didn't do it was because they'd already bought into this PlayStation Now, is it called? And you basically stream the games from before. But, and, and for me, that's just the biggest piss take of all. It's like, hang on a minute, I've already bought all this shit. Why am I now paying you to play them again? I've still got my entire PS3 collection and I've still got my PS3. And I don't have it hooked up, but if ever I want to go back and look at a game that hasn't been back compatted yet, or was an exclusive with PlayStation, I'll just drag my PS3 out and I'll play it on that. But for me, they've just went, right, we're not giving you back compat, and we're not giving you any sort of backward compatibility, and we're going to charge you for the pleasure of playing those games all over again on some subscription service that we've bought into. And they bought this service off somebody else and turned it into their own thing, if I remember rightly. And I just, I, I that to me, it winds me up stuff like that because it's like, you know, I already have these games, like just make your consoles backward compatible. What is the problem? 
So I think Microsoft were a bit genius in doing what they did. They knew by doing the back compat program, it would bring people back to them and show them that they cared about the, the gamers that were there to give them this library that they had before that they can only play on the Xbox because there's no other, other place to play these backward compat games unless you want to pay for it. And if you've already got your disc, you just throw the disc in and you get a new version of the game and off you go. And going forward, you can tell that the both Microsoft and PlayStation have made massive noises about the fact that they are going to be going forward with all, almost a PC frame of mind where it's like, if it worked on the PS4, it'll work on the PS5. If it worked on the Xbox One, it'll work on the Xbox Two. Because these have now become PCs, effectively. Because there is no more... The PS4, unless they start doing stupid stuff again like they used to do PlayStation. PlayStation used to do their own development on kit and then sell you a console. And there's no more of that because they're using industry standard kit. So you're basically getting a PC that's tweaked a little bit for that particular provider, whether it be Xbox or PlayStation. And the design, obviously, is what they come up with and everything externally and how they want it to work and what features they stick in it. But the innards are effectively just PCs now. So there is no reason at all why something that works on a PS4 or an Xbox One can work on an Xbox Two or a PS5. And that, for me, is is the future of gaming because you keep everything in the life cycle. Like, nobody goes out and buys PS3 games anymore, do they? Whereas if you'd made them battle compatible, someone would probably go off and buy a PS3 game. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you, you've, you've killed the life cycle of the PS3 by not making the PS4 battle compliant. And they did the same thing with the Xbox One at launch. And then they came up with this way of giving us battle compatibility. So I think without any shadow of a doubt, I think to keep that ecosystem... Oh, there's a word. Ecosystem. Phil Spencer likes that word. Two words, in fact. To keep those games in the ecosystem is genius for me because you're never ever ever leaving games behind when it comes to moving console what it does do is take a little bit of a it takes a little bit of a price trading amount off of whatever it is you have now because well does it if i if i have a ps if i buy a ps5 and it plays all my ps4 stuff yeah i mean there's an argument that says why would someone buy my ps4 but you know I think it will drop the price of the actual console when you're trying to get rid of it to some extent. But because people will be thinking, well, what's the point? If I get a PS5, I can play everything on it. So maybe. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, in the next next lineup of consoles. But I'm, I'm, still, I'm still bemused about the fact that Microsoft, whenever these games hit the console as back and pat, they just... They never shout about it strongly, strongly enough. And I think it's the biggest feature of the... Xbox and I, without any doubt, for me, the back compatibility program saved the Xbox One, in my personal opinion. They would have kept plugging away at the Xbox One without any shadow of a doubt. But for me, the, I think it's been its biggest feature to this point. I don't think it's, it's, it's certainly its exclusive lineup hasn't been anywhere near strong enough. Its hardware wasn't anywhere near strong enough until the X came out. And for me, the backward compatibility program, without any shadow of a doubt, has, has saved that console. Because I think a shit ton of people went out and bought that console, whether it be the basic Xbox or whatever, so that they could play back compat games. And own them again, not have to stream them through some service. I mean, you know, I say saved. It's not like Microsoft were going to go bust. I mean, they would have they would have struggled on. But as a console, it hasn't had to struggle through anymore. And it's out. I think it's outsold. It's 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 done better than the Xbox 360. I think now in its entirety. So it has it has got better and better. But only because of all the changes Phil made when he came in. I'm calling him Phil now because we're we're like that people, you know. <laughs> anyway, without further ado. And without me rambling on anymore, because it's been nearly half an hour, people, and, you know. If I don't stop soon, I'll keep going for hours. <laughs> Nobody wants that. So here we go, right? We're going to rattle through all of these games. Uh, just to remind you just how good this program is, right? And this is just the RPGs, people, right? Just RPGs. And everybody knows that on my channel... The biggest thing that, that I know, my audience on this channel are RPG people, pretty much. You know, a few of you like a little bit of the horror and all that, but we are we are a community of RPG players. I know that. That's why I, that's why I play on the channel, and I don't do story games, and I don't do you know actiony games. I do RPGs. 
predominantly. So here we go, right? You ready? And you tell me if there's a better lineup of games on this gen of console. So we've got Dragon Age Origins, back compatted. Dragon Age 2, back compatted. Fable Anniversary, Fable 2, Fable 3, all back compared. All of these games play sublimely. Oblivion, back compared and 4K'd, by the way. Or 10 bit colour palette, you know, something like that. Skyrim, okay, it's been remastered, but if you already owned it and you didn't want to buy it again, back compared. Dark Souls, also remastered, but if you already owned it, back compatted, don't have to buy it again, and plays better. Of Orcs and Men, if you haven't played that game, by the way, play it. Don't get fooled into the Sticks ones, they're more stealthy type things. This was an RP, it's a linearish RPG, but uh, really, really worth the play, that. I really loved the, the, there's a few, I think I did a few parts on that on the channel. I loved that game. Divinity 2, Dragonite Saga. Back and patted. Mass Effect. One, two, and three. Back compatted. <laughs> you could argue they're not RPGs. The first one's definitely an RPG. The other two got more action-y, but they're still RPG-ish. Witcher 2. Back and patted RPG. Fallout 3. Back and patted and 4K and 10-bitted. Fallout New Vegas, back compatible. Now, tell me if there's a variety of games like that on the new one, because I, I don't think there is. And the ones that I'm hoping for... I mean, to be fair, we got a Mass Effect game that was a bit of a nosedive. We got a Fallout 4 game, so we've had one Fallout game. Well, Fallout 76, we're not going to talk about that. We've got one Fallout game, which to be fair is a good Fallout game, Fallout 4. But I don't think it I don't think it was as strong as Fallout 3 in some places. Okay, it brought the building and all that sort of stuff into it, the crafting and stuff, but I still think the way you dealt with stuff you picked up for you know, wrapping together and mending your weapons and all that sort of stuff was really cool and I really like doing that. I think the story was better in Fallout 3. Liam Neeson, people. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Enough said. And, well, we've had two Dark Souls games. Two a lot of people criticised, but I still think it was all right. And three's really good. So Dark Souls, you can argue we've had a few of them. Bloodborne's a bit of a classic. We've not had anything like Fable. As far as I'm concerned, not that I've enjoyed like Fable. We could have had, but they went to shut the studio down. We've had one Dragon Age game. We got two on the old one. We've not had an equivalent to Fallout Vegas, you know, because Fallout 3 was made by the big guns, wasn't it? And then Obsidian made, I think, Fallout Vegas. And Obsidian, as we know, have just been bought by Microsoft. So, anyway, I could ramble on. Obliv Oblivion and Skyrim are both there. I mean, I, you know, that's two, that's two Bethesda games on the last gen as well. I mean, you can argue, I suppose, that the last gen of console lasted a lot longer than this one. But, you know, we're not, we're at year what, year five now? Year six-ish, year five or six? Anyway, here's three that I'm hoping is still going to come. Yeah, this one more so just to show it off because I have got a, well... I've got a remastered version of this game on the PlayStation, but it was never remastered for the Xbox for some bizarre reason. And strangely enough, it came to the Xbox 360 before it came to the PS3. Uh, and it's Arcania. The very first video that I ever threw up onto YouTube of gameplay, I think. Pretty sure it was the first. Was of Arcania on the PS4 Pro remaster. And I played it first on the Xbox 360 and I've still got it. And I'm kind of hoping that it does come to 360 just so that we can see how well it works running through the back and program. So I'm still holding out for that so we can show it off. 
and a couple of more unsung heroes of the time, in my opinion. Uh, we have... I can't read the little text now, but it's called Vikings, anyway, with uh, something else. Battle or uh, Battle for Asgard, there you go. Vikings Battle for Asgard. And I started playing this game ages ago, and then I kind of... I don't know why I stopped playing it, but it is a... It's a cracking little RPG, and the action in it is really, really good. And I just... I, I want this reason to go and try it again, and obviously without digging out the 360, I can't. So I'm, I'm kind of holding out. I've, I've, I had these games, they're actually sitting with the ones that have already been back and patted. I took them out of the collection and thought, oh, if they hit, I've just got them ready to go. So yeah, so Vikings Battle for Asgard. And this is a little cracker of a game, which I loved at the time. And it didn't seem to get anywhere near enough the praise that it should have done, which was Lord of the Rings War in the North. And that was... I loved that game. It was absolutely brilliant. And I'm not even sure if that studio is still going. It was Snowblind Studios, and it was done through Warner Brothers Games, who obviously owned the rights to the Lord of the Rings stuff, or did anyway. And it was kind of the only thing that I had to play. I think it's the only Lord of the Rings game we've had to play. All right, Shadows of Mordor came later, but it was the only Lord of the Rings game I th can remember from... There was there was the PS2 games that were made on the film. So you had Return of the King, which was the last one. Yeah, you, well, you didn't have a Fellowship of the Ring. So basically the Two Towers, there was a Two Towers game and a Return of the King game if I remember rightly. That was effectively how it worked. There wasn't enough action in The Hobbit just to make it its own game. So, But they were cracking games, those. And I've, I, that was part of the reason I've still got a PS2. Well, that I went and got a PS2 is because I can still play those. So, I mean, it's perhaps something that will hit the... Because they do original back compats now on the original Xbox as well, not just the 360. So maybe it's something that will hit that. I mean, they're a little bit dated when you play them and they're so painful with the save points. <laughs> There's certain sections in it where you die and you go, oh, it's like, oh, I've got to go all the way back to such and such because it's auto saves. But they are basically, you're playing through the film as Aragorn and you can play, yeah, you could play. Oh, the first one you could only play on your own, but you could play as any of the three main characters, Gimli, Aragorn, or Legolas. And in the Return of the King game, you could actually play co-op with somebody else sat with you on the couch, on the same screen, no split screen or anything. You're on the same screen, and you're all fighting together. It was really, really good. I loved those games. And they had the real actors come in and do proper recordings for the voices, and even the action. They were, they were, uh, they were motion capturing the actors. I remember seeing a video with uh, Vigo Mortensen and uh, Legolas and blah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they, they got actual motion capture doing their proper moves that they've been taught by these guys to do the sword fencing and everything. So they went all out with those games and they were given access to the actual sets that they were filming on as well. So they got to do all of this scanning of the sets and get the proper you know architecture and art styles and costumes... So they're really, really, really well done. And I kind of always hoped that they'd creep in somehow as some sort of remaster, but we never ever saw them off of the PS2 or the 360. So maybe they will creep in as the back can pat, but I think it's a massive licensing deal when it comes to Lord of the Rings. But that that was kind of a... It was kind of the, the one thing that got me into that world. And it was RPG-ish. It was almost more of a loot game. And you were very, very, you were pretty linear in in what you were doing, but the action was excellent. The, the moves you could unlock was brilliant, and the story the story was good. I mean, it was you know it's kind of a parallel story. You don't really get involved with a few of the characters pitch up. I think, I think, I'm trying to remember now. The elf girl pitches up, doesn't she? I think. But she's in one of the areas where you go to forge your stuff and you know level up and stuff like that. I think. A few characters, there's a few hints of characters dibbing in and out, but it keeps itself to itself with, I think you're fighting against one of Sa one of Sauron's sort of, I don't know, sub captains or something like that. But it was done really well, I absolutely loved it. I'm trying to remember what the characters were, what the characters' names were, I'm never going to remember, but you were basically still a warrior, a dwarf or an elf, I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, actually, no, I think you might have been a mage, actually. There's a mage, a dwarf, and a warrior rogue type person, I think. Something like that. I need to play it again. But it was it was a gorgeous game, and it was really, really good fun to play. And the fact you could play it with a friend as well was really good. And I'm trying to remember a thing. Yeah, you can play it online with a friend. So you could both be in the same thing. I'm, I'm trying to remember if you could play with three people. But as I've not got my glasses on, people, I can't remember. So there you are. So I'm still hoping that these three will hit... Arcania, Viking Battle for Asgard, and Lord of the Rings War in the North. So there you are. I mean, for me, the, 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 and that's just the RPGs. I mean, you're still talking about all your Dead Spaces coming out on it as well. I mean, the games that haven't been remastered that you can just put your disc in and you just play them and play them better than before. And you can't ask for more than that in any console for me. Like, don't cut me off from what I loved in gaming. Because you 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 can't be asked giving me back in part, and for me that's I think that's one of the biggest reasons I've fallen back in love with the Xbox again. And without doubt, of course, it is the power of the Xbox One X. But it isn't just the power of the Xbox One X; it's the design of it. It's so quiet in comparison to the PS4 Pro, and yet it's more powerful. And it's because they've thought about it and they've put liquid cooling in it, so it's not reliant on fans. I mean, the fucking the first PS4 and the PS4 Pro, they sound like they're about to fly off. The minute you start them up with any game, they're just like, the noise coming out of them is insane. And it's like they were so worried about bloody, you know, whatever they were called, lights of death, red light of death or whatever it was those ones got at any point, that they just overkilled it with fans. It's like <laughs> so it was almost like they only ever thought about the external design rather than, you know. I mean, I play with headphones on most of the time when I'm doing the recording and stuff. And... Well, I suppose to... No, I don't. I don't play with headphones on when I'm, I'm playing by myself, to be fair. Not all the time. But I am sometimes forced into it with the PlayStation 4 because it's so bloody loud. It puts you right off the game. You can't bloody hear anything. <laughs> so I've got soundproof headphones, like... I mean, if the PS... They need to think about that for the PS5 because it's, it's one of the biggest downers of the PS4 and the PS4 Pro. They're so loud. So, you know, they need to think about how they're going to quiet that down. The answer is liquid cooling for me, uh, clearly from what the Xbox One X is doing. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. So there you are. Anyway, that was my thoughts on the Bat Compat program. I, I just think it's awesome. And I cannot praise that program enough because if you take, you have a good idea. And this is what I love about everything that really that Phil Spencer's done since he came in. If you have a good idea, don't just make it happen, make it happen and go beyond that as well. And that's exactly what he's done. I mean, whoever's been doing this stuff has said, well, what about if we don't just make it play? What about if we make it play really well? You know, <laughs> I mean, like Mass Effect, like remember all those frame rate drops you got when you were fighting loads of things at the same time? Well, they're all gone. You know, you're just panning around for fun, you know. So, I mean, it's, you know, and, and every game is the same. Like every game plays smoother, looks better, absolutely gorgeous pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time as I say there was a few games that were a little bit disappointing like my, like Bioshock and stuff but in the main part it's almost a perfect idea and implemented so well it's just incredible so my hat off people well I'm not going to take it off to Microsoft for that and I hope that's something they take into every console they do going forward because if you leave us the library that we've got behind us, I don't think there's anything. I mean, I don't really want to go back to Xbox original too much or PS2 too much because you then can find a square screen, you know, because they weren't made for widescreen. And, you know, things of that age start looking very pixelated and stuff at times. So there is a there is a line to be drawn. You know, there's things like the uh, Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9 even. That you can now play, I think, on the PS4. But I tend to play them on the, the. Well, if I want to play them, I'll tend to play them on the Vita because on the little screen they actually look quite cool. They're still square, but they look really good in comparison to you stick them on a big screen and everything just looks like little squares. <laughs> it's like, like what? But I think we're at a point now. If you don't go any further back than the 360 or PS3. You're still at a point like what was it seven seven twenty p where it still can look good on a big screen, and if we can take all of that going forward now, 
then I think we're on a winner across the board. As gamers, we've never been luckier because nothing's ever going to get left behind. We're never going to be sat waiting for someone to make a remaster or any of that sort of stuff. So I really hope that they keep going with the... I hope they sort out a few of the licensing issues with Back and Pat so that we can have all of the ones that I'm hoping for, these three, and even the original Lord of the Rings ones. If they might, To be fair, I haven't actually checked if the Lord of the Rings ones are there, but I hadn't seen anything about them appearing, so... So there you are. I've talked for 40 minutes, people, about the Back Compat program. Uh, let me know in the comments below your feelings on the subject. I know a lot of my, my followers here, or my subs, are PS4 people. Uh, are you one of those people that have been tempted into an Xbox One of any description because you wanted the Back Compat program? Or has it not bothered you that much? Has it annoyed you that all the this stuff's coming to the Xbox and PlayStation are going to charge you for wanting to play the same things? I don't even know what sort of library's on PlayStation now, to be fair. And even if it was there, it's like, why the bloody hell should I pay for that one I've got? And plus, they're probably, I, I don't know, but they probably don't even, they're, they're probably playing the same way they did on the PS3. Because they won't, I can't imagine they've been run through any sort of program that's going to make them better. And if they have been, and they're running on a server somewhere, why can't they run on a PS4? <laughs> why can't they do what Microsoft have done and just create a little program that runs it for you? Because that's all Microsoft have done. They've run, they've basically built an emulator that will play those games. But the, the games themselves don't play from the disc anymore. The, the, the disc activates a download and you play a new version of the game. So they're obviously running them through that. But pretty sure if, if, if PlayStation had wanted to, they could have done a similar thing. But they'd already invested in buying this streaming system, so you kind of understand why they haven't. But I don't know. How popular is PlayStation now? I mean, is it... I don't... I, I've never heard anyone say that they've signed up to that. Let me know. Are any of you using it? Is it good, bad, or indifferent? I've no idea. I haven't tried it. And also, you with those games, you're reliant on streaming as well. So if for any reason your, your network's down or you've got no internet access, you can't play the bloody thing, can you? Because it's streaming to your system. Unless you can download them and play them. No, you can't. It has to play from the server. Otherwise, if you can download them and play them, then you... <laughs> why are they not back and back? Anyway, I'm confusing myself now, people. I think it's time that we finish things up. Yes, it is. Well, let me know, as I say in the comments below, anything about what I've said and your feelings upon the said subjects. I shall, now that everything's working again and the blue screen situation has been solved, that I shall be getting some recording done at some point over the weekend. I've still got a... I do, yeah. I've still got a... I've still got a recording I did of Subnautica, second part of Subnautica full release, which I actually recorded before I had the blue screen problems. And in fact, I have a feeling... That it was when I hit the stop record and edit button recording that game that it that's when I got the first blue screen, I think. So, but it's still there, and I managed to edit that together and that's ready to go. So I'll try and post that up because that there's a, there's quite a lot for my little channel. There's about 600 odd views on that first video, which is quite a lot for a, a let's play video on my channel. So I will try and get that up over the weekend. If not tonight, it will be over the weekend at some point. It has been an honour and a privilege, certainly for me. <laughs> Maybe not for you, but for me. Bringing this vlog to you this Friday evening, people. And I shall see you all in the next one, folks. You guys take it easy. Bye.